Hey everybody, I'm Chris Sofer. I do stuff at Knight Foundation. Uh, so, uh, so this talk, uh, this story begins uh, in my first year of college, and if you're wondering how old I am, that was about three weeks ago. Uh, and so uh, I'm at a party, and uh, I'm talking to this girl that my friends have sort of encouraged me to go over to. And uh, so, you know, we're doing some sort of awkward small talk, as people are wont to do. And she asks me, what's your major? And I say, public policy. And she looks at me in all seriousness and asks, what's that? And it takes me a second, but I decide it's a great time to explain it to her. <laughs> and so I start telling her about cost-benefit analyses and stakeholders, and I am, of course, at that moment, the least interesting man in the entire world. <laughs> but this is sort of the thing that we think about, right, with young people. That it's, a, it's a common stereotype that young people are disengaged, are uninformed about civics, and as the result of being a generation always connected to a device that encourages short attention span, are sort of not participants in our civic life in the way we want them to be, not knowledgeable about the things we want them to know. And so I got really interested in this subject and did a research project that took me to all these different places, interviewing people and doing some research about what was out there and what we knew about young people's engagement with news and with civics, and want to share some of the lessons from that that I think are, are relevant and interesting and that I'd like to talk about with all of you. And the first one is that new behaviors are awesome. So one of the things that, that shows up in a lot of the literature is that sort of we're worried about young people because they read the news a little less or they spend less time on things, and those things are true. Uh, young people tend to read the news less often and less frequently, and also, uh, but, but they do read with more sources, right? They're more likely to check uh, different sources throughout the week. They're more likely to share and highlight and comment on things and publish their thoughts on top of content. So even though they may be less engaged, may uh, be less likely to know who the Speaker of the House is, there are some other activities that they're more likely to engage in. But that general stereotype of the uninformed young person tends to get shared in media stereotypes, as we're all familiar with. And as a result, a lot of our interventions tend to focus on uh, sort of a, the wrong problem, which is to try and convince young people that it's really important to read the news and to be a civic citizen. But when you talk to people, as I did, uh, this is a UK university student who said, I don't read the news. And she took a second and said, I know that's bad. She was really quick to sort of, you know, to put that in there because she knows she's supposed to do it. So it's not a, it's not a convincing problem. And it's not that young people aren't willing to engage with content. This is a, I was on a panel uh, with some Danish young people a couple years ago and there was this one teenager who said, I spent a lot of time on the Doritos Facebook page because their brand is awesome and I like Doritos. And this was sort of baffling to the journalists in the room, but it's because you have a generation of people who are really open to new kinds of engagement if they like your stuff, right? It's pretty simple, but in order to capitalize on that, in order to capitalize on those new behaviors, you have to design for those users, as we've been talking about and as many of you in the room, of course, know. And users have to drive the kind of things that we design, and young people, as with any audience, are pretty strange. And when you interview them, when you do usability studies, the research that generally comes back, and I'm skipping the statistics because, you know, these talks are short, but the research that generally comes back calls into question and sort of requires a look in the mirror for a lot of the base units of what journalism tends to do. Uh, the, the article, the serialized coverage of an ongoing topic, the way we lay out our homepage. These assume a lot of things that young people don't bring to the table, and that ends up, of course, in a news experience that's hard to access. One of my favorite stories is a guy I interviewed in Paris who said he really loved Le Monde. It was his favorite newspaper, but he didn't read it because he felt like an idiot on the metro trying to open and fold it and like turn to the next page. So instead he read a tabloid that he thought was really bad. <laughs> And so what that says, right, is you have to design for those crevices, those moments in people's days and meet them where they are. And the other thing I think is really interesting is that actually young people's age is actually not uh, one of the best indicators of their behavior beyond sort of general generational values. And there's really great research that the Newspaper Association of America did looking at this. And what they found was essentially that your news reading habits were more determined by some of these things. Are you living with a spouse, living with children, than with your numerical age? And that's really interesting because it means that I, in some ways, have more in common with this guy being a single young person than with somebody my own age who has, is married and has kids. And what that means is that within sort of the general, you know, within serving young people, we don't want to just sort of build tools, obviously, for that general population as a blunt instrument, which is fairly obvious, but it tends to come back to us uh, in that way. And one of the behaviors that I share with an older person is being an urban young person who tends to check the news a lot, local is back. This is a huge behavior with young people that's really interesting, and with everybody, but young people sort of lead the way in checking for on-demand information, looking for information around them about their local area, and wanting to be more engaged with news about what's happening in their place and to participate in their place. I think this is a really big trend. Jesse Shapins and I are actually organizing a chat after this at the local brewery to talk about place and news. 
And the final points are number five and six. Don't try to talk about six things in five minutes because you don't have time. So cut out a lot of stuff. Young people feel overwhelmed by the volume of content, and I felt overwhelmed trying to talk to you about six things in five minutes, so I talked about four and then kind of added this one at the end. But the real point I think here is, you know, young people need good design. And